Thank you so much, Keith. Yes, I am Debbie Giorgiani with Adam Bly. We are the co-hosts of The Spirit World, heard right here on Saturdays. We will be focusing this Saturday, Adam, on Divine Mercy, but we wanted our Morning Joy listeners to hear about uh, the amazing graces of Divine Mercy and the devotion, and we wanted to bring on a dear friend, and I believe he's an expert in this area, and I just believe in my heart of hearts, Adam, that our listeners are going to benefit from the discussion we are having with this wonderful guest uh, today and hopefully later this week. And this will get everybody prepared for Divine Mercy Sunday. So why don't you do the introductions and we'll bring Rick on air with us. Sure, Deb. And I'm really excited that that Rick is here with us. I've I've had a wonderful experience in in Poland at Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, I'm not nearly the scholar that he is. There is so much wealth in the diary of St. Faustina. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But let's let's um, touch on who Rick is. So, so Rick Paolini has been a student of the message of divine mercy as revealed by Jesus to St. Maria Faustina since 1994. He is also a member of the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, a study of the Marian spirituality, and promoter of devotion to the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He is co-host of Divine Mercy in My Soul, which is a radio program heard on the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network, where he is also the Director of Finance and Human Resources. If people have specific questions, they can email Rick at rickp at thestationofthecross.com. That's R-I-C-K-P at thestationofthecross.com. No spaces in there. Okay. Welcome, Rick. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. You know, in the world we live in today, there is so much fear and anxiety and sin. And the message of mercy is a message of God's great love for us. And it's a message of hope. It's a message that can bring people back to the church. It can strengthen those that are in it. I know that Debbie mentioned that, you know, it has changed her life. It has changed my life significantly because in my life, I've always been considered a good Catholic, but the divine mercy message has brought me so close to Jesus that I live with Jesus every minute of the day. And I am so grateful because I know that Jesus loves me personally, and I never knew that before. When I committed sin, I committed sin, and I felt that I was concerned about going to purgatory or even maybe going to hell. Now my relationship with Jesus, because of the Divine Mercy devotion, is such that I feel that I'm letting my beloved Jesus down, that I'm disappointing him when I commit sin. It's still a sin, but there's a totally different response to it for me. When I go into church, I used to go into church because I had to go on Sunday. And now I go in because I know Jesus is waiting there for me. And I tell everyone that I speak to about divine mercy, he loves you personally, and he's waiting to be with you. He's waiting to be with you in church. He's waiting to have you invite, invite him into your life, into your home, and all you do. And for those of you who suffer from fear or anxiety, Jesus told St. Faustina, fear nothing. I am always with you. St. Pope John Paul II said at the tomb of St. Maria Faustina, and if this person responds with a sincere heart, Jesus, I trust in you, he will find comfort in all his anxieties and fears. And that's something that so many people today are looking for. And today I find so many folks who tell me, you know, what I've done, I feel so much guilt for. I feel so much guilt. I feel that God will not forgive me. And entry 723 in the diary, Jesus told St. Faustina, the greater the sinner, the greater right he has to my mercy. What a, what a message of hope. How wonderful it is to know that there is no sin that Jesus will not forgive if we are repentant and if we are resolved not to give it again. In entry 1074, Jesus tells St. Faustina, 
I am love and mercy itself. That's the essence who Jesus is. Jesus is love and mercy. He also tells her, my heart overflows with great mercy for souls and especially for poor sinners. It is for them that the blood and water flowed from my heart as from a fount overflowing with mercy. That's entry 367. Entry 699, Jesus tells St. Faustina, let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though it's sins be as scarlet. What a message of hope. If you've committed the most horrible sins over and over again, and you're truly sorry, and you resolve not to commit it again, that's for you. Jesus said, if your sins be as scarlet, don't be afraid. If you are Catholic, you have the sacrament of reconciliation. If you are not Catholic, you can ask Jesus directly to forgive you. And I do believe with all my heart that he will. Entry 1485, Jesus says, My mercy is greater than your sins and those of the entire world. That's how great his mercy is. It's greater than all of our sins in the entire world. And he proved that on the cross. I let my sacred heart be pierced with the lance, thus opening wide the source of mercy for you. Come then with trust to draw graces from this fountain. I hope sometime that we have the opportunity to speak a little more in depth about divine mercy because the image is a great source of grace. Jesus comes, says, come to this vessel for graces. And in that, you see that the rays come forth from his heart, the, the pale rays and the red rays. The red rays signifying communion, blood, Eucharist. The pale rays signify baptism, confession, that forgiveness. The ABCs of mercy are ask for his mercy. B is be merciful to others. And C, completely trust in Jesus. And again, that trust in Jesus, that's at the bottom of the image where his message to us is just five words. Jesus, I trust in you. In Polish, it's only three words. Jesu ufam tobia. That's his message to us. Anxiety, fear, if you truly trust in Jesus and understand what that trust is, you won't be fearful. You won't be anxious. Okay, the tribunal of mercy, that is confession. Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. On Thursday, we are going to be speaking in depth about the grace of Divine Mercy Sunday. One of the conditions of receiving that most incredible grace is to be in a state of grace. So if you are in a state of mortal sin, please get yourself to confession so that you can receive those incredible graces. And if you haven't gone in a long time and you're not in a state of mortal sin, you don't have to confess, but it certainly is recommended that you do that. Jesus told St. Faustina, when you go to confession to this fount of mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul in the tribunal of mercy the greatest miracles take place and are incessantly repeated. Here the misery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Again, don't be afraid if it's been a long time. Jesus told St. Faustina that when you go to confession, it is me in the place of the priest that you are confessing to. It is me in the place of the priest, persona Christi, that forgives you. And I will also mention that a couple things that can help you prepare for Divine Mercy Sunday. Yesterday, we began the Chaplet of Divine Mercy Novena, and we also began the Divine Mercy Novena itself. And if you have the pamphlet for that, that's great. If you don't, I believe you can go to the divinemercy.org and you can find information on the nine days of the Novena. 
And this novena was given specifically to St. Maria Faustina, and Jesus asked her to pray it. And we have been asked also to pray this, and there's a different intention for every day. And again, you would pray the day's intention, and you would also pray a chaplet. And the chaplet is such that there are so many graces attaches, attached to that. It says the chaplet can be said any time, but the Lord specifically asked that it be recited as a novena, especially on the nine days before the Feast of Mercy. And he promised by this chaplet, by this, no, excuse me, by this novena of chaplets, I will grant every possible grace to souls. We pray this novena of chaplets for our own personal intentions or when we offer it together with the novena to the divine mercy for the daily intentions dictated by our Lord to St. Faustina. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told St. Faustina, encourage souls to say the chaplet which I have given you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. When they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as a just judge, but as the merciful savior. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Even if there be a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. Through the chaplet, you will obtain everything if what you ask for is compatible with my will. Debbie and Adam, I prayed for an individual for 35 years for the salvation of his soul. And I have to tell you, it was on his deathbed that he asked for a priest. And he was anointed. And when Jesus said, trust in me, I trusted in him. And there were times when it was very difficult. And I don't know about you, but one of the most requested prayers at our network is for the return of loved ones to the faith. And I have to tell our listeners that please pray for them and pray with trust and pray with persistence and patience, and there will be a change. And you may not see it, but you have to trust. And I would recommend entries 1485, 86, 87, 88, and 89 in the diary. And those entries will show you and give you an idea of the length to which Jesus will go to save a soul. There are five key elements in divine mercy. There's the feast, the image, the novena, the chaplet, and the hour of mercy. And before I start to speak about the feast, I want to let you know that the hour of mercy, the three o'clock hour, is so powerful. Jesus said to St. Faustina that whatever you ask in that three o'clock hour, if it is consistent with the will of God, it will be granted. Now, Rick, it can I? It will be granted. Rick, can I jump in for a second before Absolutely. we move on? Before we move on to that, because I know a lot of people are going to have very practical kind of questions in their mind. So, absolutely, the the ocean of mercy is there for us. When a person goes to confession, can you touch on the firm amendment to not commit the sin? F any more because we've explored the idea of rooting out the sources of sin in our life as opposed to the idea that I can just confess a sin over and over and Jesus is endlessly merciful. He is endlessly merciful, but it's our job in the Christian journey to dig deeper within ourselves and do the spiritual work of trying to amend ourselves so that we stop sinning. And, and that's kind of um, part of the Christian journey. And I wonder if you could unpack just a little bit about that. Absolutely. One of the things that we have to remember, Debbie and Adam, is the fact that on so many levels, we can apply human sense to something. 
And when you're speaking about a firm amendment not to sin any longer, as human beings, we can tell when someone is not sincere. How many times has a spouse said to their spouse, oh, I'll never do that again. I'll never do that again. We can tell as human beings whether or not that person was sincere. And you know what? They may fall again, but you will know by the individual's actions, by their words, whether or not they're truly sincere in what they said. And our God, knowing all, will know when we say that we're committing a sin and we're, you know, we do it again and again and again on purpose, that's presumption. And that's a sin. So when we're talking about avoiding sin, we need to avoid the occasion of that sin. When we're avoiding the occasion of that sin, then we are, in fact, doing everything that we can. We're human, and God knows our humanity. And every time we sincerely, sincerely ask for forgiveness with the firm amendment not to sin again, we're forgiven. If we fall, God knows, and he knows whether we're sincere or not. If we're not sincere, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, if someone's living with someone in sin and they confess their sins and then go back to living with that person, how can you have a firm amendment not to sin anymore? You're going back into the, the, the place where you're committing sin. So when we avoid the temptation, when in our heart we truly do everything that we can not to commit that sin anymore, God will forgive us every single time. And, you know, I can tell you, um, there's things that I've done that have hurt my wife, and I've told her, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore. Now, was that the last time I did it? No. I did it once or twice more, but she knew that I was trying, and guess what? I don't do it anymore. And our God knows that. So, yes. It's if, if we are doing everything we can to avoid that sin and we still fall, we are forgiven every time. And God knows the difference, whether we're sincere or not. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think it did for now, Rick, because uh, we actually are getting the signal that we got to send it back to uh, Keith for the rest of the uh, morning show. But you're going to be back on Thursday, and our, our segment is called The Next Right Thing. So if I if I heard you correctly uh, this morning, the next right thing is if you didn't start the Divine Mercy Novena, get caught up and, and pick up and and uh, start praying the Novena. Go to the uh, diary, St. Faustina's diary entries, uh, starting at, at um, entry 14. 85, you said 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. So go ahead and start there, 1485. And then also make sure you tune in on Thursday because we'll be talking about the grace of Divine Mercy, which is a very important way to enter into Divine Mercy Sunday um, and experience what Adam was saying, those oceans of mercy and graces. I mean, amazing. So uh, Rick Paolini, you're incredible. You got us um, uh, caught up on what we need to know for now on Divine Mercy. And if and we're going to um, leave it there for now. Thank you so much, sir. And, and Adam, final comments before we send it back to Keith. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Um, and I look forward to, to learning more and just encourage everybody, um, just as Rick was saying, it's never too late. Um, get to confession, get on the journey, and Jesus is there. He's yearning for you, and his mercy is there for you. Mm -hmm. Love it. Thank you so much. And more with Rick Paolini on Thursday. So that's why you got to stay with us on this journey, on this road to holiness, on morning joy. And for that, right now, we'll send it back to Keith.